Nestled in the Liberec Valley in the Czech Republic, stands the picturesque village of Witkov. Life seems more than peaceful here for its hundred or so inhabitants, but for some time, anxiety has prevailed. Before there was about a metre of water here, but in the last year the water level has dropped a lot and the stream's almost completely dried up. Fingers point to global warming, but also to the Polish lignite mine of Turov on the other side of the border. Its huge water consumption threatens the groundwater of the whole region, fear the inhabitants of Witkow. As here at the kindergarten, they had to dig deeper and deeper wells to get drinking water. The problem is that not everyone can afford to fund new wells, and if people don't have water, they will leave, and the area will die. We head to Bogatinia in western Poland, the adjacent town to the Turov mine and its thermal power plant. The city owes its prosperity to coal. But that comes at a price. The Turov plant is ranked among the five most CO2 generating and also most polluting coal-fired plants in Europe. This neighborhood is nestled at the foot of the Turov chimneys. We have an appointment with one of the inhabitants. Like many in Bogatinia, he works in the energy sector. He doesn't want to be recognized. The extraction and burning of coal cause many health problems, especially because of the coal dust and fine particles that smother us. Standards are regularly exceeded. We feel it in our mouths, in our eyes, in our noses. We see it on everything around us. Here they're loading and storing coal. Look, it's right next to our neighborhood. And that's what the snow looks like in winter. Let's go to the terrace. That's what it looks like. It's a day after we cleaned up. The European Court of Justice has slammed Poland for the poor quality of its air. In addition to the mining industry, the use of coal for heating and cooking in 40% of households is mostly to blame. In Katowice, capital of Silesia and host of the recent World Climate Summit, Do you want to mask? These activists were trying that day to raise awareness. According to the European Environment Agency, pollution kills some 50,000 people a year in the country. From 50 most polluted um, uh, cities uh, in European Union, uh, 33 are located in Poland, and coal is uh, one of the uh, uh, reasons of global warming, and that's why we need to phase out coal. A challenge in Silesia, long called the Polish Kingdom of Coal. The industry represents some 85,000 direct jobs and generates four times more indirect jobs. The Piast coal mine, not far from Katowice, is the largest in Europe. We're allowed in a few days before the COP24. It was a real challenge to get all the way here. Mining companies are very reluctant before the summit to see the media. They're afraid of bad publicity. <laughs> it's the end of the working day for these men. They spent seven hours in the pits, five and six hundred meters deep. Khadoslav is one of the 3,500 workers here. At 29, it's his ninth year at the mine. The job is trying and dangerous, he says, but he couldn't think of doing anything else. 
I've seen this mine from my window my entire life. My father was a miner. My grandfathers worked in the mines. This is a tradition transmitted from generation to generation. Sometimes I feel like a human wreck. My spine hurts, my knees hurt, my legs hurt. But that's the nature of the job. It's hard to explain why, but something draws me to it, and I keep working in this mine. Outside the mine, Radoslav shares other passions with his friend and neighbor Dominic, who launched a communications agency called Creative Mine. Together, they started a blog dedicated to the mountains and winter sports. If I have to spend my time working in narrow tunnels and in the dark, then my reward is spending my free time in open spaces, in the mountains, on the summits. Radoslav is also a photographer. For years, he has immortalized the realities of miners. I feel it's my duty, because I live here and work in this mine to cultivate this mining tradition, to show it and support it, so it will never be forgotten. The fight against global warming is also their business, they say. But it can't be done to the detriment of the community in which they grew up. This simplistic assimilation of those who risk their lives to extract coal with global warming, for me, is social racism. And that's unacceptable. I think we should change our energy mix in the long run, reducing the share of coal. But it must be a well-planned process. The end of coal, which accounts for more than 80% of the country's electricity, is a distant prospect. In addition to the construction of a new coal plant in northern Poland, several mining sites plan to expand. New plans for the extension of the nearby Piast mine under the town of Imielin are worrying residents. Tomasz wants to show us the damage already caused by the mine in another village nearby. Tomasz, this village was affected by mining underground. Because of land subsidence, the buildings are leaning, the houses are cracking. In some cases, they even had to be demolished. Oh, wow. Now, this, this is a crack. Here there's been intensive mining activity for 30 years. They fix the buildings, they get damaged again, they fix them again, they're damaged again and so on. Look at this pond of stagnant water. The water accumulates and the mine doesn't pump it. This forest dies because it's underwater. At the entrance of Imielin, the railroad tracks collapse with the terrain. Alicia meets us there, a teacher, she also wants to save her town. This railroad is for me the symbol. On one side of what our city is now, it's pretty and neat. And on the other, it shows what can happen to us. Our homes can collapse, as well as both our drinking water tanks. In the long run, Tomasz and Alicia fear to see the city depopulate. Our day ends in this house. Bartosz and his neighbor Anna are waiting for us. Their neighborhood is far from the mining perimeter. They thought they were safe, wrongly. There are big cracks. The door frame has also sagged and down there there's another big crack. And this wall is completely split. My first shock I remember as if it were today. It may have been our third or fourth night in this house. When the house shook, I jumped off my bed and then I couldn't go back to sleep. It happened even recently, there was a huge tremor. Yes, it was on the 20th of October. It was over three degrees on the Richter scale. Items in the cupboards were overturned, the cupboard doors opened, the drawers came out. We had to hold on to the TV so it wouldn't fall. We've no reinforcement structures in our houses. We're sure if the mine starts extraction here, 180 meters deep as they wrote, our houses will just disappear. I'm counting on the help of the European Union, whose climate policies uh, aim to reduce the exploitation of coal. 
The carbon neutrality advocated by the European Commission by 2050 is unthinkable in the eyes of the Polish authorities and the mining industry. Too fast a transition would be fatal, says the regional head of the Solidarity Union in Silesia, for which the green economy cannot offset the potential job losses. 25 years ago, when the restructuring process began, we lost thousands of jobs, and only hundreds of jobs were created in exchange. If the acceleration of the decarbonization process continues to be as strong as the European Union wishes, we would not withstand it either economically or socially. And anyway, we'll continue to buy products with a carbon footprint coming from countries that do not care about climate or reducing greenhouse gas emissions like China, India, the United States and so on. And we will lose competitiveness in the European Union. Traces of the deep restructuring of the coal sector in Poland are still visible. While part of the mining basin has succeeded in its transition, some regions are still struggling. In Lower Silesia, in the southwest of the country, the region of Wałbrzech used to thrive on coal. Deemed unprofitable, all the mines here were closed down, leaving tens of thousands of people out of work. Many here have never accepted what they consider, above all, as an unjustified political decision like this former miner we came across in the street. Look at this hill over there near the mine. There's plenty of coal. There's so much coal. What's the problem with that? We need coal. And those who think otherwise, well, you know. Roman lost his job as a miner some 20 years ago. After failing to find work in Poland and Europe, he started working in the so-called poverty pits, illegal mines dug manually in the city outskirts. At the height of the crisis, they used to sustain up to 3,000 people digging up and smuggling coal. Severely prosecuted, the activity has become more scarce in recent years. Now, Roman lives from odd jobs. But he still comes here from time to time to make ends meet. It's our black gold. It can crumble on my head. The earth could crush me. But we consolidate the pits so it's safe. We can go in, go out, pray God, and all goes well. So this pit is only about two meters deep, but Roman tells us they can dig up to 15 meters. And he just placed seven pieces of coal on his pickaxe. And he says they represent the seven people he knew who died in these pits. As long as there's coal, there'll be poverty pits. The authorities will come and close them down, but people will come and reopen them, because coal is, was and will always be needed. On that day, Roman will not sell his coal. He is giving it to one of his neighbors, also a former miner, then a mason. An accident plunged him into misery some 10 years ago. I get charcoal from the poverty pits. And it's Roman who brings it to me. My friend, the best. The gas and electricity are cut off. With a social allowance of 140 euros per month, Zbigniew can't pay his debts. 
It burns well. I'm not cold because I can heat myself. If I didn't have something to burn, oh dear. It's hot, yes. Yes, yes. That's it. That's the way things are. We head for the city of Nova Ruda, about 40 kilometers away. We're invited to a very exclusive gathering organized each year ahead of St. Barbara Day, patroness of minors. Roman is here in traditional costume, for nothing in the world would he miss the event. The mines have been closed for many years, but we're here to celebrate the ancient traditions of the miners, share a mug of beer and sing the miners' songs. So that our hearts, if only for a few moments, beat to the rhythm of those old days when everyone was working. Yeah. 